Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about nested classes in Java. So, so far we have seen that we can create classes in Java and we can create objects of those classes to interact between those classes and objects and other properties as well. But what if you have a use case or what if there is a need that you need to define a class within a class. So that's the concept of nested classes that Java does allow you to create classes within the classes. Now you might be wondering as to why do you want to do that? And the simple answer is encapsulation. You would be facing some scenarios while writing enterprise grade applications where you have a class which has its own scope, but that whole scope or the existence of that class is justified by another class. For example, if you try to design an object oriented design for a house, then a kitchen cannot exist without a house because the kitchen exists inside the house, right? So if you have that kind of relationship, then probably kitchen class has to be inside the house class somehow. And that's where this nested class concept will come into picture. And that's why we have this nested class concept here. As you can see what, uh, what I'm showing on the diagram that Java programming language allows you to define a class within a class and that is called nested class. Now, when we talk about nested classes, you will hear two different terms. Basically, nested classes are divided into two categories, which are static classes or static nested classes and non-static nested classes. Now, static nested classes are called simply static nested classes and the non-static nested classes are called inner classes because they are non-static, they are just normal inner class. Exactly similar to the way we say a normal method and a static method. Similarly, if you put a static keyword in front of, in front of a nested class, that becomes a static nested class. And if you do not put static keyword in front of a nested class, then it is simply treated as a general inner class. That's the overall concept. Now there are some more drivers of why you would like to use it. One example is I gave you about the existence of an object within an object or, or technically speaking, the existence of a class within a class, the whole house and kitchen analogy, which I just shared with you. But broadly, you will see three different reasons, these different reasons due to which you will be using nested classes. First of all, it's a way to logically group all the related classes that are only used in one place. What it means is that if you have a class which is only serving the purpose for a larger class, then it's better to group those two classes together inside a single class or simply nest the smaller class inside the bigger class. We, I might be using the term inner class and outer class to point out the static nested inner class and the outer class. That's the first reason. The second reason is, like I said, it increases encapsulation because now you have full control over what you can expose and what you cannot expose or what you should expose and what you should not expose because inner classes will also come with its own set of visibility constructs like private protected, etc. So you, you get more fine grained control in terms of what you want to expose to the outside world collectively from the outer and the inner class and it can lead to more readable and maintainable code. Though I would honestly say that this is debatable because in a lot of programming languages, static nested classes are not promoted because they drop readability. Imagine if you have 10 classes, if you have a single class and if you have a, a nested hierarchy of 10 classes, it becomes super confusing and super complex to track the visibility of the variables and also to understand the code better. So this is debatable whether it improves to readability and maintainability or not. Maintainability, yes, to a sense, because you have a single class which is containing the logic of a inner helper class and the outer class. Readability, yes or no, it depends. If, uh, if the classes are small size, then yes, it does improve readability. If they, if they grow larger, then it's better to move the class outside and just make that class maybe a package private or something. So this is the basic premise of why we use nested classes. Now let's talk uh, about an example which by which we can demonstrate how to work with the static nested classes. So here I have created a class. It's a simple class, but I've just named it as outer class so that we understand that this is the outer class. So I have a class here which is named as outer class and at line five, I am defining a static 
variable inside the class. You can see the static keyword here and I just called it as outer static member. Then I have a simple instance variable. This is something which you have seen normally in, in all the different examples I have given you. And then I have another static variable, but this is private. So this one is a normal static variable. This one is a normal instance variable. And this one is a private static outer variable. All these three variables are sitting in the outer class, but this is private, this is static, this is private static, and this is a normal instance method. And we will see how we can access these variables inside the static nested class. To define the static nested class, the way you will write it as you will be inside the class opening and closing braces and you will start writing like this static class and the name of your class. That is how you're going to define a static nested class and then you put the curly braces and whatever goes inside it is just like any other normal class you would write. So let's say inside this static nested class, I have defined a method called display. And now I am trying to access this particular variable, which was a static variable defined in the outside class or the outer class. We will see if we can access the static variables from the outside class or not. So that is what this system.out.println is doing. I'm just accessing this directly. You can see you can directly access the outer class static member variable inside the static nested inner class. Then in the next statement, I am accessing the outer private member, this one. So the outer private member, which is also static. So these two static variables are being accessed here in these two lines, basically. And then I have commented out one more thing to try out if I can access the normal instance member. Also remember the concept which I, uh, which I taught you in the previous session that a static method or a static block can only access static variables. A static block will not be able to access non-static variables. So these two are static variables and this is a non-static variable. So we will see if the same construct still applies on this particular class or not. So inside the display method, I have these two sysouts and this one is commented out. I will come back to that later. So you have the, you have your outer class and your static nested class ready with a sample method. And now let's see how we can invoke these outer and inner classes. How do we create the objects of an inner class? So for that, I have this static nested demo class. It's basically containing a public static void main method, as you can see here. And let's try accessing a static nested class. So if you want to initialize or access the inner static nested class, then you have to follow this kind of construct where you say outer class dot inner class name. Then you give a reference to it. And again, you follow the same construct. You say new outer class dot static nested class name and a simple parenthesis. And this is how you are going to create an object of the static nested class, which you had defined inside your outer class. Remember the syntax. This is how you're going to do this, that you type outer class dot static nested class. Once you have done that, it will call the default constructor of static nested class and you will get an object. Now you will also see the dependency which I talked about. There is no way that you can initialize this static nested class without referring it from the outer class. You always have to write this outer class dot to access the static nested class. You will not be able to access or use this static nested class directly anywhere in your program. So the whole concept of the inner class only existing with the outer class holds true here because you can the inner class only can exist if you refer it from the outer class. Once you have the object, you call the dot display method and let's see what happens. So if I run this particular program and let's see what kind of output do I get? I get two lines of output when I call the display method. So let's go to the display method where I am doing a sysout for the static member of the outer class, which was this variable. So that value gets printed as 10. And then I'm printing the private static member of the outer class and that also is accessible. So it means that you can access the normal static variable of the outer class and also the private static variable of the outer class inside a static nested class. That's one part of it. Now let's uncomment this and see if this works. You see that you directly get a compilation error and you don't even have to wait for the program to be run. You see that this particular variable instance member 
this instance member variable is not accessible so this this also verifies our uh, understanding which which was built previously in the previous session that static blocks can only access static members and those static blocks will not be able to access any non static variable or member and this was a non static member so that's all i want to cover in this particular session where we talked about the nested classes concept the static nested classes concepts basically and we also had a look at what the static nested class can access or cannot access and we also saw how do we initialize an object of a static nested class in the next session we are going to talk about the second category of the nested classes which is the normal inner classes or the non static uh, nested classes if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session